Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Ryan from Ryanet and welcome to this DIY screen printing tutorial. Now our goal in this tutorial is not just to show you how to screen print, but it's to inspire you to create. Ryanet and Print Liberation got together to create these kits just for you. We started screen printing completely on our own and completely DIY. We didn't have all the cool things that come in the kit and we didn't have any instruction, but we learned in kitchens and garages just like you're going to learn in this tutorial. We turned screen printing into two very successful businesses. So what are you going to do with screen printing? Let's get started by showing you how screen printing works and how to use your kit. And from there, the sky's your limit. You can do anything that you want through screen printing and the screen is your canvas. So let's get started. All of our DIY kits include all the screen printing supplies you need to start screen printing. There are a few household items you need to add to the list, so let's show you what you need now. Half inch or crescent wrench. Power drill or screw gun. Light fixture or desk lamp. Tape measure or T-square. Sharpie or opaque black marker. Iron or heat gun for curing. Black trash bags. Heavy duty paper towels. Scotch tape. Rubber gloves. And of course, a t-shirt. Let's start by putting together your screen printing press. So we're gonna start with a hinge kit. You're gonna to wanna to take out your DIY hinges and your DIY hinge screws. Your DIY hinge easily comes apart. Your male end attaches to the table, your female end we're gonna to wanna to put on the screen. We're gonna use the two male ends as a spacer, so we're gonna set them underneath the frame like that. Now we'll apply the female end. We'll put it up to the edge of the frame like so, and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is on the notch, so your wood frame will come over and it'll have a notch right here. This is where you're going to want to center or place the female part of the hinge. So simply place it and screw it in. Next, put the male part back in and then line that to where you want on a table and screw the other two down. Now keep in mind, you can always move this but you are making screw holes in wherever you're placing your hinge screen. So once it's on, it can easily come off and move. Now let's show you how to set up the DIY presses. We're gonna show you on the one color press. The four color press works pretty much the same way. Let's start with a screen clamp. Take your clamp brackets, your off contact adjustments. You wanna put them with the large side of the inside of the bracket facing down at the bottom of the clamp and the large side facing on the inside of the clamp like so. So they're both gonna go opposite like that. I typically set them to the midpoint, put our washers on and then put our nuts on and actually just hand tighten them down because we can make the fine adjustments later. Now let's put our screen clamp on the print arm. We're gonna start by putting the top bolt of the clamp in and that does not have a spacer, so just take the top bolt, put the nut on the outside, and then once again, just hand tighten that. Now, let's put the spacer in, the bottom bolt, then kind of slightly squeeze that, give it some pressure, and if you can't do it by hand, simply tighten the top bolt down a little bit, then slide in the top bolt through that spacer. Should slide in like that, put the nut the washer on and then put the nut on right there like so and once again hand tighten. Now let's put our shock on so you take your shock receiver and apply it to the ball and to put it on just put a little bit of pressure on the ball and pop it will go in. If you ever need to take it off the shock has a little spring that you'll need to get underneath it with a screwdriver or hinge pop that spring off and then it will come off the ball. Now let's put our platen on we have four platen screws and the platen should be pre-drilled to fit the DIY press. We're going to take the press, we're going to flip it upside down, put the platen on the edge of a table, hold it with one hand while we put a screw in or take the screw in the screw gun, and then we'll simply start it by just screwing one of those screws in to give ourselves a nice base. And then make sure all the other holes align and simply put the rest of the screws in. Our press is now together. You notice that it will actually be pretty hard to press down without a screen in it. So don't be afraid if it feels pretty stiff up here. Now we're actually going to attach it to a table or a bench. To attach to a table or a bench, I like to keep it roughly waist high. 
So if you see here, it's just a little bit lower than my waist. You don't want really, really high screen printing surface area. So I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna make sure that the palette actually sits off the table. So if you see what I'm doing out here, the palette's sitting off the table, maybe three or four inches, and then I'll attach it to this particular press cart, which you can use a tabletop, you can use an old bench, anything that you really want to screw your screen printing press to, but it really needs to be solid. If you're doing this in your kitchen, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be using some other type of big piece of wood that you can attach the press to and then put some weight on it or maybe some clamps and put it towards that kitchen counter so it doesn't move around. So once again, once I'm about four inches or so off, four or five inches, there's no super science on that, you want to be able to then screw this and secure it down to that tabletop surface. As an upgrade to the DIY press, you can add these pallet brackets, which are super handy in giving your pallets extra extension or swapping different sizes of pallets on your screen printing press. All right, so our screen printing shop's now set up, so let's move on to making screens. The way the exposure process works is we have an unexposed screen that when exposed to light, hardens. We take our film positive, we put it up to the unexposed screen in reversed order. Then we expose it with light. So now let's say the screen's exposing. The area of the film that is blocking out the light from reaching out of the screen or the emulsion behind it is leaving it unexposed. That unexposed part, when you take the film off, can be washed off with water. So the goal of this film is to block out light, meaning it has to be very dark and opaque. Because this film has to be very opaque, we want to make sure that we use the right settings on our inkjet printer to print it. This is inkjet waterproof film, so it will not work on a laser printer. It works best on an inkjet printer. It has two sides to it. It has an inkjet receptive side, which is slightly sticky, and it has the plastic carrier side. You can easily tell by licking your finger, and the side that the finger sticks to is the inkjet receptive side. So now, let's talk about the best settings you can use on your photo printer. The best settings you can use on your inkjet printer is going to be best quality photo, and then your paper setting is going to be something like premium glossy photo paper or premium glossy or glossy photo paper. These settings will lay down the most ink on your film, give you the optimal dense and dark film for screen exposure. Now because this is a film positive, if you're designing it on the computer printer, you want to design a black image or black text on a white background. Then you're going to want to print it using those photo settings that we just told you about. Any black image or artwork will do. We actually got this squeegee art directly from the DIY print shop site where we have a bunch of free DIY art. If you notice the art that we're doing is simple text and simple clip art and it's all solid. You don't want to start out using gradients. You always want to start out DIY screen printing using solid images like we see here. You can get into gradient printing with half tones as you advance in screen printing. You can also use a sharpie or an opaque pen to actually draw and create your own film. So let's say we wanted to draw or enhance this explanation mark right here. We could do so with this Sharpie. You wanna make sure that you have a very opaque film or very, very opaque pen to do that with. And you wanna make sure that you use the inkjet receptive side as well to do that. The final thing that you're going to want to put on your film is the center line. Now this center line was actually printed on the film. If you didn't put the center line on your film in the artwork program, it's very easy to do after the fact. You simply actually take your film, you fold it in half, and you put a little tiny crease at the top and at the bottom of your film. Now all you do is come and take your Sharpie or opaque pen and put a little dot at the top and the bottom of your film. And now as you see here, our film has a center line. You want to make sure that you do this after your film is printed because a creased film can feed fairly difficultly through an inkjet printer. Once we have our film, we can now go to make our screen. We'll take our screen and we'll take it off the hinges simply by sliding it to the left or to the right, depending on how your hinges are set up. It comes off, these hinges are watertight so that you don't have to worry about getting water in them, and then it can easily slide back on. Pretty cool little setup really. Now you have your screen, it's time to prep your screen by degreasing the screen. We're going to take that over to the sink and use our DIY screen degreaser in order to do that. First we take our screen degreaser and we fill it the rest of the way up with water. And then we put our cap on it. Now this is a drain safe product, eco-friendly screen degreaser. 
and you don't have to worry about putting it down the drain unless you're putting other stuff down with it. Definitely read the instructions carefully to make sure that you're doing things right. Once it's filled up, we're gonna take our screen, put it in the sink, and we're going to spray a little bit on the screen as we get the screen wet. So we'll get our screen wet like that, and then we'll spray a little bit on the screen, just a few squirts, it doesn't take a lot. Now what this actually does is this actually cleans all the impurities off the screen mesh so that our image will stick to it. So we'll take our brush and we'll just simply scrub in the degreaser like so. We want to make sure that we're doing this in a clean sink so that we do not have dirty you know, food and stuff or dirty grease getting in. We also want to make sure that we scrub off not only just the screen but we scrub off the frame as well so that we can clean the impurities off the frame, the hinges, everything's nice and clean. So once it's all scrubbed down, sized it up, we're going to go ahead and rinse it out. So we'll just rinse it. We'll make sure to rinse it good so to get all the suds off of it. And once again, we wanna make sure that we're doing this in a sink that is not dirty. If it is dirty, you wanna lift up the screen just a little bit to clean it off. There you, go. you can use lukewarm water. You don't wanna use super hot water. And you can use cold water too, but warm water does clean a little bit faster. Once again, just don't get it scalding hot. So once it's all cleaned, we're good to go. So now we can actually just tap this off if we want to like that, or we can just let this dry in front of a clean fan. If you let it dry outside, or if you let it dry in front of a dirty fan, you can blow you know, junk, you know, dust and dirt back into the screen basically defeating the accomplish of degreasing it, which we just did. So you wanna make sure we let this dry in a clean area. The next step of the screen printing process involves emulsion. An emulsion exposes your screen and puts your image on it. Because it exposes, it needs to be handled in a light safe environment until after it's exposed. To create a life safe environment, we've included a light safe yellow bulb in your DIY kit. This light safe yellow bulb does not put out any UV rays. UV rays come in from the window, they can come in from standard lights, but this is light safe. Now because we want to create a light safe environment, if we have a window like this, we want to make sure that we put a shade over it. What we're going to be doing is just simply taking a black trash bag and putting it up over the window to block out any of the light from actually coming in. So simply just come up here, put some tape on there or something like that to block out the light. We took our light safe yellow ball, we put it in a desk lamp or a light fixture and then plugged it in. We have no light coming in the outside, now we have a light safe environment. Now that we're in a life safe environment, it's time to prepare our screen for exposure. To start, we're gonna mix our emulsion. In your kit, you got a pint of dual cure emulsion, meaning it has an activator that actually makes it light sensitive. So when we open up the emulsion, we can actually open it up in light. Right now, it's not light sensitive, but the moment we mix the activator in, it becomes light sensitive, and then we always wanna handle it in a light safe environment. Start by opening up your emulsion and taking the residue that's on the cap and then scraping it in using your emulsion stirring stick. So scrape it in there like so. Next, we're going to add distilled water, 50% or halfway into the emulsion diazo, which activates the emulsion. So use like a water bottle or some type of water that's distilled to actually mix this up halfway. Once you have your water halfway, put the cap back on and then shake that aggressively to mix in all the, all the diazo and the water together. Now that we have our diazo solution, we're going to take this and we're going to dump that into the emulsion to activate it. Now that's dumped in, we simply take our stir stick and we stir it all the way until it is uniform in color and consistent. I typically recommend leaving it sit with the lid capped a little bit open to allow the air bubbles to evaporate or work its way out of the mixed emulsion. Now, also once again, your emulsion is a dual cure emulsion, so it has a shelf life, meaning that once we mix this all the way, it will last for about three months. I typically like to date my emulsion when I mix it so that I know when it's about ready to expire and I can order more. You can keep this emulsion for a little bit longer if you store it in the fridge. However, never, ever, never let this emulsion freeze. If it freezes, it will immediately go bad and you won't be able to use it again. Once your emulsion is uniform in color like we see here, we're gonna clean off the applicator stick 
and we're going to put on the lid and leave it tilted just slightly open. Now I do recommend letting this sit for an hour or so to let those air bubbles kind of work their way out. Now emulsion will stain, so if you get it on your countertops, you want to clean it right away with some soap and warm water. It cleans right up with some soap and warm water. However, if you let it stain, it will stain. That diazo leaves a, a kind of an iodine yellow stain, but it will clean up right away. So as long as you clean it up right away, you're good. Okay, our emulsion is mixed. We've allowed the air bubbles to kind of work their way out for a little bit. Our screen is dry. Now it's time to coat the screen with the emulsion and prepare it for exposure. To coat the screen, we're going to use a tool that came in our kit called a scoop coater. This one's black. Some of them are silver depending on the type of kit that you bought. We're going to use a clean rag to make sure that there's no dust or dirt in that scoop coater. You can even use a little bit of degreaser to be on the safe side. Once that's all clean, ready to go, we're going to fill it up with emulsion. So we'll now take our emulsion and we'll put maybe a quarter of emulsion, and this depends on how many screens you're actually doing, but you can fill it up maybe a quarter of the way, a third of the way, or even half the way if you're doing a lot of screens. But right now we're just doing it a quarter of the way. We'll fill it up a quarter of the way with emulsion, and then you always want to make sure to have a rag handy, because this gets a little goopy as you see there. So we're just going to wipe that down and then set that into a safe spot. Once that's ready, we're just going to put the cap back on a little bit like that. Once again, set it to the corner like that. There are a few different ways to coat your screen with emulsion. The key is to get an even and sharp coat. You're going to use the sharp side of your scoop coater. You're going to notice that there's a round side for a thicker coat, which are for more advanced screen printing applications, and a sharp side. We're going to use the sharp side. Also, you want to make sure that you coat both sides of the screen to create a very strong stencil or image. We're going to start on the flat side or the shirt side of the screen, and we're going to finish on the squeegee side or the ink side of the screen. To coat your screen, hold your emulsion scoop coater with one hand. I like to place my screen on the edge of a table or the edge of a countertop like this to kind of hold it in place. If you're in a light safe environment where your hinges are at, you can even use your hinges to set your screen back in place. So once we're ready to coat, you want to take your scoop coater and put it about maybe a quarter inch from the bottom of your frame. You tilt your screen back a little bit like so, and you tilt your scoop coater back like that to allow the emulsion to actually work its way onto the screen mesh. We want that emulsion to really dam up against the screen mesh. So we're looking for something like that, that emulsion's damming up against the mesh. We're going to move the scoop coater from the bottom to the top like so. About a quarter inch from the top, we're going to stop and let that emulsion kind of saw off so that we leave the top of the screen clean. If you have areas of this screen that have a little bit of emulsion drips, you can take that damp or wet rag or towel and simply wipe those off to keep the screen nice and clean on the top and the bottom. You want to be careful, however, not to use too wet of rag because you don't want water dripping into the center of your screen. There's a very specific sound that you're looking for when you're coating a screen. It's a zip sound. You want to use a good amount of pressure. If you don't use enough pressure, your emulsion is going to spill all over the screen. I'll demonstrate that now. So here's an example of not using enough pressure. And your emulsion is kind of spilling all over the place. If we use a good amount of pressure, we're going to let that emulsion dam up, move it back a little bit, about a 45 degree angle or a 75 degree angle there, and then zip up. And you hear that zip about a quarter inch from the top. You kind of saw it off leaving a nice smooth coat screen. We're going to do the same exact thing on the inside of the screen. So we're going to flip the screen upside down to coat the other side. Then we're going to use the hinges and then kind of the countertop right here. We'll take the scoop coater, dip it in, and then let it dam against the emulsion, against the mesh, and then zip up. About a quarter inch from the top, we're going to saw it off, and now we're done. When you're done coating, you're looking for a nice, smooth, and glossy surface on your frame. Not too much emulsion. Too much emulsion will make it hard to expose. If you feel you have too much emulsion, go ahead and coat again, but instead of applying emulsion, simply just take your scoop coater and act like you've already applied the emulsion onto the frame and kind of do a clean wipe like this. And that will take the extra emulsion off the frame. What you're looking for, once again, is a nice, thin coat. Here's a few tips for coating your screens. 
If you can't get it down with one hand, try two hands. You can take a two by four or some type of wood to put it up against the frame and then let's say set the screen up against the side of a counter or the wall with a two by four behind it. This keeps it nice and stable and allows you to use two hands which controls the scoop coater a little easier. Once our screen's coated, we're gonna let it dry. To let it dry, we going to let it sit face down and let it dry. So gravity pulls the emulsion or stencil to the outside of the frame. We're gonna take just two pieces of kitchen items right there, or you can use pieces of wood, which work really good, and set them on the frame itself on either side. So I'm gonna set one on this side and one on this side. And this allows the screen to dry in the downwards position. To let it dry quicker, what you can do is put a fan. Once again, make sure you have a clean environment here to make sure that there's no dust blowing into your nicely coated screen. So let it dry like this. If you don't have a fan, it's gonna take quite a while. So we would recommend using a fan. So keep in mind, we've been doing this, including the drying process in a light safe environment. Letting your screen dry is very important. It needs to be all the way dry. So it needs to dry in a very dry environment. If you're too humid, it won't dry very well. So if you're humid, you might need to get a dehumidifier. However, if you're in a fairly dry environment, if you put a fan on it, it should dry in about three to four hours. If you're not using a fan, it's gonna take like a day to dry. And if you're in a human environment, it may not dry at all. So a very dry environment's important. And then airflow is important. Making sure that airflow is nice and clean so you're not blowing dirt back up into your screen. All right, once we're done coating the screen, we're gonna take the rest of our emulsion and simply dump it back into the emulsion container. I'm using a glove to kind of scrape that emulsion back in. You can also use some of those cleanup cards that you got in your kit to do that. And once most of it's back in, we do need to clean the scoop coater. We do not let, want to let this emulsion dry in the scoop coater. So you want to do this as soon as you're done. So once it's all back in like that, you clean off your hand nice and good. And then cap that emulsion. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now to save our sink, because we're doing this in a nice clean sink, what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to take a piece of trash bag so we cut a trash bag in half, we're going to put it in the sink. We're going to cut a hole in the bottom of it to allow the water to drain down. But it's not going to get the sink full of emulsion because that diazole does stain fairly quickly. So now we'll simply take this and we'll do all our cleaning and wash out like this as well. So if you're using a, a home environment like a sink or a bathtub, definitely recommend protecting that because this stuff will stain fairly quickly. So I'm washing this out with warm water. It goes very quickly. You can even take a rag, kind of scrub on it, and it cleans up pretty nice and easy just with some warm water, making sure to protect the environment that we're washing out in. Once our coat is all the way washed out, we want to let it dry. These are critical edges, meaning you want to keep them sharp. So when we ever let it dry or we set it, we're going to keep it set face up. We never want to set it on the ground like that that will actually could wreck our edge. So you definitely want to make sure that those edges are protected. You can tell your stencil or your emulsion is dry. If you rub it, your fingers don't stick to it. If you lick your finger and it doesn't stick to it, but if it sticks to it really, really bad, it probably needs to dry a little bit more. So if you feel moisture in that, make sure you get into a drier environment or you let it dry for longer. Once our screen is dry, it's now time to expose our screen. Now keep in mind, if you want to pre-coat your screens, you can do that, that's okay. However, you want to make sure that you store them in a light safe environment. Everything right now is done in that light safe environment. So a good way to store your screens in a light safe environment is by taking that black trash bag, putting them inside the black trash bag, and then storing them in that black trash bag. You can store these pre-coated screens for two to four weeks before you go to expose them onto press. To expose the screen, we're going to take our film and we're going to line that to the center of the screen. Now, if we're doing a two-color job, three-color job, or four-color job, the alignment is much more important than if we're doing just a one-color job. If we're doing those multiple-color jobs, we want to actually get our T-square and ruler out to make sure that this line, this film, is aligned in the same spot on each frame. However, for a one-color job, we're simply going to line the film to roughly the center of the screen. Now, we're going to line the film in the reverse order. So we're going to take the film upside down, we're going to put that through the flat part of the screen or your shirt side. That means that on the inside of the screen, you can actually see your image the correct way that it would show up on a t-shirt. Once it's in the approximate center of the frame, we're going to take some scotch tape 
and tape that down. Once our screen is taped down all the way, if we want to, we can actually take a piece of very clear glass that fits the inside of your mesh and put that over that. Now this would be an aftermarket item you could pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot or a glass shop and would give your film some more positive pressure. What's important in screen printing is positive pressure to get really fine detail. And for most of your DIY designs, we're gonna be okay with just taping it. However, for more fine detail, if you take a piece of glass and put that over, or if you invest in an exposure system later, that allows you to create that positive pressure, pushing your film to your screen mesh and getting a nice fine image. Now that our film is aligned, we're going to expose the screen. To do that, we're going to take our exposure ball that we got in our kit, and we're going to put it in a desk lamp or a light fixture like this. This is going to turn it on. So this is on. Now we don't want to turn it on until we're ready to expose the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to put it about a foot, maybe 14 inches above the frame. So I'm just going to hang it right here from this cupboard. And then I want to make sure that this is evenly placed over the center of my screen. Once again, this is done in a light safe environment. So it's right on over the center, about a foot above it. It's holding tight and then I'm going to plug it in. When I plug it in, it exposes for nine or 10 minutes. So you want to make sure that you're plugging it in and starting a stopwatch or a timer or something to make sure that you're exposing that range. So once again, 12 inches, 14 inches above, and then put your screen in the center of that and then plug it in and start the timer for nine minutes. All right, nine minutes is up. So time to unplug and wash our screen out. So now that our screen is exposed, we're gonna take the film positive off of it. In your life safe environment, you should be able to still see your image exposed on the screen. So right there, we can see our image slightly exposed to the screen. That's what we're looking for. So if your screen was not properly coated with emulsion, or if your film wasn't dark enough, or you didn't expose long enough, you won't see that image. You wanna make sure you be able to see that image. If your emulsion starts to go bad as it gets old, you won't see the image exposed onto it, so you need more emulsion or new emulsion. So now that our screen's exposed, we're gonna take that, put that into the sink, and we're going to get it wet on both sides using lukewarm water. And what we're doing right here is called developing the screen. So we're just loosening that image area up and developing it. Okay, we'll let that sit for about a minute and then come and spray it out. When you're washing the screen out, I recommend washing it out from the flat side of the screen once it's been allowed to soak or develop for about a minute. Now, the more pressure you wash it out with, the better. Using a soft amount of pressure doesn't come clean very easily. So right now we're just using and if we use just a little bit of pressure right there, it starts to wash out, not too bad. But if we use more pressure, see washes out much faster. So the more pressure you can use here, the better. If you have like a strong shower nozzle or a stronger nozzle, like outside, it would work very, very good. Now keep in mind, we're still doing this in the light safe environment, meaning that if we go and try to wash this out in direct sunlight, it's not very good. So if it gets wet first, you develop it in the light safe environment, you can go wash it outside, that will work okay. But for the most part, keep it in the shade. So we're looking to clean all that emulsion out of our stencil. So this is washing nicely. One thing to keep in mind is we do not want this screen to get too wet. If it gets too wet, it starts to wrinkle up on the edges and it will start to essentially not wash out at all and or your design starts to wash away. So we want to be careful not to get that screen too wet. If your emulsion is a little hard to wash out, what you can do is you can take your hand and kind of scrub at that part, that maybe that part got a little bit thicker coat of emulsion down there towards the bottom or towards the top. Kind of scrub it a little bit, kind of agitate that emulsion up a little bit. Once your screen's all the way washed out, we want to tap all the water out of it and then let it dry. A great way to let it dry is putting it in the sun also, you can let it dry by taking it, putting it underneath your exposure light, and then putting the exposure lamp back on it like so. That'll allow it to dry very nicely. That light kind of bakes in the screen, making it harder and last longer. Once our screen's exposed and all dry, it's time to wrap up the light safe so we can take off the shades. Time to start screen printing. 
All right, now it's time to make that magic happen and screen print our first shirt using the hinge kit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our screen and we're going to put it back into the hinges, slide it back into place there. And before we start screen printing, we're gonna tape the edges of our screen off. So we're gonna grab the DIY tape that came in your kit and we're going to cut it to fit the frame. So on the inside of the frame, we're applying this tape so that the ink does not work its way around the edge of the screen. So we put about half of it on the inside of the mesh, and then we take our finger and we kind of give it a seam against the wood frame, and then we apply it to the edge. And we want to do that around each way. We can either just use a scissors right there or like a tape dispenser to cut it. Kind of cut it off like that. And once again, we want to seam the edge, making sure we're getting a smooth, a good adhesion along each side of the frame and the mesh. Once your screen's all the way taped down, you wanna look through your screen to see if you see any parts that need to be taped off from the other side. Now this would be, uh, example, this would be your center marks. You don't want your center marks to print on your shirt, so we're gonna take our screen, put it in the up angle like that, and then on this particular screen, we're gonna put a piece of tape on the outside of our mesh over our center mark there. So if you see any pinholes or dust specks or anything in there, you want to make sure that you tape those off from the other side. The ink side you tape off on the inside, make sure it's nice and seamed. So now let's align our shirt and print our first shirt with this DIY kit. So if you notice here, this mesh has a little bit of what we call off contact. Now that off contact actually allows that screen to bounce and lay ink onto the shirt. But if it has too much off contact, what we're going to do is we're going to put a spacer, like that piece of cardboard, we actually cut a piece of the DIY kit off from the inside. You can also use like plexiglass or a piece of melanine. Uh, maybe a quarter inch would be a good piece. We're going to put that underneath the kit to give us a little bit of distance right there. So it's got to fit our image area, which it does. Now, if you're doing a multiple color image, what you want to do is you actually want to take this spacer and put it inside your shirt so that your shirt stays consistently in the same spot. So if you're gonna try to print that again, um, that would be important. Or if you're doing white ink on a black shirt, that would be important as well. So to do that with the hinge kit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our glue and we're gonna cut a little hole in the top. Now this works much better on melanine or like plexi than it does cardboard. Cardboard doesn't obviously adhere glue nearly the same as a hard surface would. But we just put a little bit on there, kind of spread it out to give us a sticky surface to insert on the shirt. So kind of get that sticky surface all around there so that shirt has somewhere to live. Now, we're gonna print on the front of this shirt, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna stick it inside the shirt like so. So open up the shirt and stick it inside the shirt. Now it's important to get the shirt square and to get our center square. So that's a little skinny center right there. We can probably do a little bit better job of centering this out if we had a little bit bigger piece to put in it. But right here, we're just gonna stick that in there like so. You can lift the shirt up like that and then kind of line that there in the center. You can even create little drawings or marks on your palette to make sure that everything aligns the correct way. And if you notice, that sticks the shirt really nice right there. You can also simply take the shirt and set it on top of this little piece of wood, cardboard or melanine. Uh, basically, this adhesive way makes that surface a little bit more stable when you're printing on it. From there, you're gonna wanna take the shirt collar and center them between the two hinges. So you're gonna take the two hinges and center them out. Then you're gonna to wanna to lift the shirt or screen down over the shirt. Now typical image placement from the bottom of your center T right here is about three fingers or three inches or so. So right now this shirt is too low because when the screen comes down, I can actually see the collar through the design. So I'm gonna lift this up because it's already centered. I'm gonna simply push it up a little bit. So I'm gonna push this up, keeping it centered to the center and I'm gonna kind of tuck that down underneath there. So now we're gonna, we're gonna measure it out. So we're gonna get that nice and center there. So right there, it's about three fingers down. We're above our surface area. Everything looks good and we're ready to print. 
To apply ink to the screen, take one of your ink cards, just dip it in there like that. And then outside the screen mesh, so not in the open area, so near the edge of the frame. Now keep in mind this is a relatively large image. You want to apply a decent amount of ink there. So enough ink to coat the whole screen consistently. So this is using the Green Galaxy Pitchback ink. If you get a little in the image area, that's okay. We're just going to take that card and kind of set this aside. If it's really hot in your environment, this is water-based ink. So you want to make sure to cap that but we're okay in this environment. Now we're going to actually flood the screen up. So we're going to apply ink over the image area like that. And then we're going to print it. So we're going to hold the screen down with our left hand and then we're going to print it with our right hand. So notice my angle right there. I have a lot of ink on my screen or my squeegee. I lift that up. My angle is about a 75 degree angle or so. I'm going to flood that again and then print with it one more time. So print with it probably twice. I'm looking through my mesh to make sure that I'm getting all the ink kind of pushed through the screen mesh. Now, when you're using this hinge kit in this manner, we typically recommend you stick with the colored inks and light garments or lighter garments like black ink, red ink. The white ink is going to be a lot more difficult to print. You can do it, but it is much easier to print white ink on a press, which we'll explain in a second. So we've got two passes. We look to make sure that our screen is all the way you know, flooded with ink. We've got all the ink through. If there needs to be different parts, we can come over here and once again, holding it down. If you've got enough pressure, you can use both, both hands like that. And that does look, work a little bit easier when using both hands. But make sure that your frame is all the way down and stable, which that was, and we probably didn't need to use that one hand. It is much easier to use both hands when you're pulling it. So we pulled it. We've taken the ink out, so now you need a place to set your squeegee. So you can either take your ink and kind of dab it up on the top there again to allow it to rest up, and then set your squeegee to the side, careful not to dribble it too much. And then simply lift up. Now we're going to take out the sticky part. Careful here because we do have wet ink. And here's our first screen print. All right, do it yourself screen printer. So we did this all using the hinge kit. Everything looks good, looks nice and centered there. So now let's go to cure this ink and then we'll actually use the screen printing press to show you how much easier it is to use a press. But you can print a shirt fairly easily using that hinge kit as well. If you're gonna be doing more than one shirt, it's very important to leave your screen flooded with ink. So you wanna take your ink and you wanna kind of flood it up leaving that image area floated with ink. You don't want to press too hard. You kind of just let that squeegee float across the top. You set the squeegee aside, put a paper towel down. Now you don't want to let this drop now, so take a piece of tape, take your tape roll or something to kind of let that sit in the upward position. This will make the screen mesh continue to stay wet while you're waiting to put another shirt on it. If you leave the screen mesh open, this is water-based ink, so it could dry in the mesh and you would have to take some water and kind of mist it out or scrub it out in order to get that mesh unstuck with ink. So keep it flooded and you'll be okay. Once we've printed our shirt, now it's time to cure our design. Now this is a very important part of screen printing because if the ink doesn't cure, it won't stay on the shirt. It may feel dry, but it has to cure. The temperature the ink cures at is 320 degrees. So a hot iron will do the trick. Also a heat gun or optimally a flash dryer. I've even heard some people use an oven. Once again, it's 320 degrees. In your kit, you got this silicone coated Teflon paper. So basically, this will protect the shirt against the iron. So I put it over part of the design and I take the iron on the hot, hot, hot setting and I kind of go over each part of the design or so for about, you know, 90 seconds to two minutes, allowing that ink to settle in and rest in. So we're curing the ink there about 90 seconds to two minutes over each part. The longer you cure, the better. Obviously, you don't want to scorch your garment, but this paper should protect your garment good enough. So we're doing half the design at once, doing that top part, and then moving our way down, curing the whole design. Once we've gone for a lot amount of time, once again, 90 seconds to two minutes, we want to feel that. Now, a couple ways to test. You can get your finger wet, and you can kind of scrub that a little bit. If ink starts to come off on your finger, that means that's not cured all the way. 
You can take a white rag and do the same thing, and that definitely is a good way to test if it's cured all the way. So right here, this is not cured. Ink's gonna come up on my finger. But right here, this is cured really good up here, and ink does not come up on my finger at all. So now let's cure the bottom part of the design, but to do that, we're gonna use something a little bit different. We're going to use a heat gun to do that. We're using a very, very hot heat gun. This gets to like 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So this does a pretty good job of curing, but you do need to be careful with this not to scorch your shirt or whatever's underneath your shirt. So I lift the shirt up a little bit like this and I kind of go over each section for about 30 seconds to a minute, making sure that it's curing out all the way. And if your ink's really wet, you can actually see your ink kind of dry underneath the heat gun. So it does a good job of, you know, kind of blowing that water out of the water-based ink. This is water-based ink. It's completely eco-friendly. It's very safe. Now, it's very easy to use, very easy to clean up, but all that water has to evaporate out of it before it'll cure. So that's why using this forced hot air does do a pretty good job of curing. So now we're cured all the way up there. Move to the bottom part of the design. Kind of going over each section for about 30 seconds to a minute with this forced, very, very hot air. You're gonna see water kind of steam out. That doesn't mean the shirt's on fire, that's just the steam coming out of the ink. This is a little more tricky than the iron because if we miss a section, like if I cure this section and not this section and that middle section is missed, that middle section is going to wash out. So once again, curing the ink, very, very important part of screen printing. Take your time. Now let's test it. We're going to rub of our finger against there. Definitely no ink coming off here. Do the same thing on top. Yeah, we're good. There's This design's nice and cure. One was using the iron, one was using the heat gun. Either way works, just you want to make sure the iron takes a little bit longer, but it does cover a little bit bigger surface area. Now, if you have a heat press, you can also use a heat press 320 degrees for 90 seconds using a Teflon coated piece of paper or something like that. Here we have a flash dryer, which does do a final cure of your shirt, and it's traditionally used in screen printing to flash between colors. So if you have a white underbase with a red overprint or something like that. Right now I can put this about four inches above my shirt, rotate the flash dryer over the shirt, and allow that to cure the shirt as long as it's got air underneath it or is not stuck to a pallet or something like that. That cures the shirt in about 90 seconds to two minutes, but it does the entire shirt at once, so it's a lot quicker. It can also be used in other things in screen printing, especially if you're using your four color DIY screen press. Now we're gonna print another shirt, not putting that inner lining in the shirt, so it goes a little bit quicker. So we'll take the shirt. This is a white shirt that we're printing. Once again, we recommend starting out with those lighter garments. It makes things a lot easier when printing. Put the shirt up to the top, everything's already centered, and then simply make sure it's all flat. We'll bring the screen down over it. Now we'll take our squeegee, take our squeegee here, and then we'll make sure everything's flat down. And we're gonna pull the squeegee. Now it's very careful to make sure that screen does not move underneath it. So we got another print here. And then we'll slowly lift this up. Now this will, the shirt will follow the screen. So you gotta lift it up a little slower like that. There you go. And now once again, if we're gonna print another shirt, we're gonna flood our screen. In this case, we're actually gonna clean the screen out. So we're gonna leave it unflooded. Once we're done printing, we wanna put all the ink away. So we're gonna take our ink card, bring the ink container over, and we're gonna scrape the squeegee clean putting all that ink back into the container. The more ink you save, the less ink you have to buy. So if you're careful with cleaning, you can really save a lot of money down the road by not having to buy more ink. So we're gonna scrape that all off there. Then we're gonna set that aside. And we're gonna come under the screen and do the exact same thing. Scrape it all off. We wanna do this after we've done our final print and we don't wanna re-flood the screen. So if you notice, we've left the image open here because we're cleaning. Now we're gonna take the squeegee and the screen over to the sink to wash out. We're gonna throw the card away and cap the ink to print more shirts later with it. To clean your screen and squeegee, you wanna get as much ink out as possible before it gets in the sink. So you, another way to clean is you can take a wet rag um, and kinda of come in here 
And this is water based ink, so it cleans up very nicely. I'm using gloves, of course. So you want to get as much of this ink off the screen as squeegee as possible. You can even spray a little bit of that degreaser soap on there, which makes that ink degrade a little bit easier and kind of suds up. You do not want to spray any of that emulsion remover on unless you're trying to reclaim the screen itself. Now I typically like doing the first round of cleaning with the, with the uh, tape still in. So now that that's clean, we're going to take our nozzle and we're going to go ahead and rinse the rest of it off with water. Now this is water-based once again, so it does a very nice job of cleaning up. It does come off if you get it on a surface or something like that. You can wash it off with warm water and soap. What we're trying to do is get all this ink residue off. We don't want to spray big globs of ink down the drain. It's not friendly for the environment. Even though this is water-based, still has pigment and stuff in it. And for this, we're using a little bit warm water and it works great. See how easy that screen cleans up. Now, if we're gonna save the stencil, save the screen, we don't wanna get it too wet. So I'm just gonna flip it over and clean the underneath of that. And then once again, a good way to dry it is just to take it outside and let it dry in the sun. That'll dry that on real nice. So that's all done. I'm gonna take that outside, let it dry in the sun. We're gonna do the same exact thing for the squeegee. Just spraying the rest of that ink residue off with nice warm or hot water. Cleans up real easily. And then we'll set this aside to dry as well. If you're done screen printing for the day and you don't want to keep your screen, you can reclaim your screen by using the emulsion stripper. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this, we're going to fill it the rest of the way up with water. Once again, just use a little bit of water there, fill it the rest of the way up. And then put your spray nozzle on. This will actually take your stencil out. Now, very important when taking your stencil out or removing or stripping the emulsion, pressure is super important. Now, I'm gonna, we're gonna try to do this in the sink and I think we're gonna work out okay. But if you did it, let's say, with a garden hose or even better yet, a pressure washer, it's gonna work so much better. So we're gonna spray the screen down with a generous amount of emulsion remover on either side of it to rinse it out. And this is gonna permanently remove the emulsion so that we can then degrease the screen and start the process all over again. Now, next we're gonna get our scrub brush. This is not the same scrub brush we use for degreasing. I recommend getting like two Rubbermaid containers and putting one for stripper, one for emulsion remover um, and stripper, and then the other one for degreaser so that we can keep them separate. Then you can get this wet and then start scrubbing down the screen. And you might need to use a little bit more emulsion remover than less. So if you need a little bit more, just spray a little bit more on. And this will start to take out the image in your screen. Once again, you want to do this in a protected environment. So if you're using a kitchen sink, you know, protect that with this, that trash bag or something like that. And then you want to scrub both sides of the screen real aggressively to kind of agitate and take out that emulsion. One tip is you never ever want to let this emulsion remover or emulsion stripper dry on the screen. Very, very bad. If you let it dry, it will permanently lock that emulsion or stencil into your screen and you'll never get it out. So you want to keep it wet, keep scrubbing it until you see the image degrade like we're seeing on the screen right here. Keep in mind the edges of your stencil might be a little bit harder to reclaim, so you might need a little bit more emulsion remover. You can either saturate the brush or kind of just take that emulsion remover down the side. All right, once we got that all scraped, you know, scrubbed down, we're going to take our spray once again. Stronger the better. And we're going to spray it down. So you see those areas towards the corner. If I was using a little bit more pressure right now or a pressure washer, that would come right off. But since we're not using very much pressure, we got to use the scrub brush to do that. So it might take a little bit more scrubbing if you're not using the pressure, but the pressure is key and I would recommend that. But it does do a pretty good job without the pressure still. Scrub that in. And keep in mind that those areas of the screen, you're not going to be screen printing in those. So not the end of the world if they don't come out all the way. A little chunk of emulsion on the corner like that's not going to really hurt anything. Okay, once your screen's all the way rinsed out like we see here, we can apply the degreaser, the screen degreaser, and start the process all over again. 
Okay, DIY screen printers, now it's time to move on and print some posters and use the screen printing press. First, before we print, we need to level the press. So to do that, we're gonna use two half inch wrenches or two crescent wrenches. We wanna make sure the press is flat and it has a little bit of off contact, meaning it has a little space underneath the screen to allow that ink to bounce or transfer. Screens are like trampolines, so they kinda of need to bounce that ink onto the substrate. This is much more important when you're printing on darker garments with white ink. So if you move to the thicker inks, off contact becomes very important. If you noticed, it wasn't very important when we were printing using the hinge press and using the simple on contact approach because the ink's very thin and meant for lighter garments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first control our tilts. We're gonna take our screen press and this works the same as the four color press as the one color press. We're gonna push it all the way down, making sure that everything's loose. Then we're gonna take our screen, we're gonna put it into the screen clamp and we're gonna tighten it down. Once we've tightened it down, we now have leveled out our tilt. So we're going to take all the tilt screws, which is both the bottom and the top, and we're gonna tighten them all the way down. Once our tilt is leveled, we're going to now play with the off contact. So we take the off contact adjustments, which are back here, and we're going to loosen them up so we can raise or lower the screen. Now, it's very important to do this evenly. So you can do this the easiest way by taking a piece of, let's say, one eighth inch paper or cardboard or even better something a little bit more solid like mylar or let's say plexiglass and you put that underneath the screen so i'm just going to demonstrate by using a stack of poster paper so i put that underneath the screen and then i level it out by raising up the screen off contact and dropping it into place so i'm late dropping the screen into place all the way and i'm allowing that off contact to rest and let that screen settle into the position. So we have that pushed all the way down. We have these loose so the screen can lower and raise evenly. And once it's all settled over that even off contact plate, we're going ahead and take our half inch wrench. Ratcheting wrenches work a lot easier here. And we're gonna tighten this down. This makes it very simple to do off contact adjustments. We have about an eighth inch of spacing and it's even from the front to the back of the screen. So once we're all tightened down there, we can now raise the screen up and then lower it again. And we're checking and we feel that the screen has an even balance all the way across the screen, which was exactly what we're looking for there. So we have even off contact and ready to align the print. One more thing on off contact is we can take a little washer like this. And because these screens are a little bit bigger, we can take this screen and on the back edge of the screen, we can put this washer, which holds it up and gives us a little bit of off contact immediately. So that helps hold it up on the edge of the screen. So as you pull the squeegee across or push the squeegee across, it's even. Now I'm gonna draw a center line down my platen. The reason I'm doing this is because if you remember, we have center lines down our screen. So it makes it centering very, very simple. I'm using a Sharpie or a magic marker to do that. I'm drawing a bold center line using a T-square down the center of the platen right there. Now we have a nice center line down the center of our platen. We can come and we can align our screen. Now I can actually see the center marks in the screen and I can align the top and the bottom center marks directly to the top and the bottom of the center line. So everything's nice and center and I can even align my paper or my, sh my shirt to that center line so everything's consistent and even. So everything's centered out, we have good off contact. Let's print some poster paper. To print poster paper, first we need a little bit of our tack adhesive, our DOI adhesive, not a ton, just a little bit to hold the paper down. So we just put a little bit out like that. For t-shirts, we need a little bit more, but it works the same way. So we're just gonna take that, kind of spread that over the portion of the poster paper. Now you can either thin this down if it's too sticky or re-tackify it by using a warm, wet rag. So a wet rag with warm water can either clean it off or also make it tacky again. So if it's too strong, that's a way to thin it down. Or if it's not strong enough, it's a way to kind of clean it up and then apply more. So now we're going to set our poster paper down. And we're going to set it even top to bottom and even in center. So if we want to, we can even get a little bit more concise with this. Take our T-square. We can align the bottom and then draw a line at the bottom to make sure it's even every single time. So we know exactly in the center and the side, we can even draw a line up the side, which makes it very consistent. We're looking down over our print and making sure we're centered. 
We're a little bit low there, so we're gonna lift it up, pull it a little bit up like that. So I know that pretty much on this print, my paper has to come up to the top, and I can see it centered out. Now for two color printing, this is a one color print, so two color printing, you definitely have to get out the Sharpie or alignment tool, or you can even take ink cards and kind of make jigs by putting one ink card here, one ink card right here, and one ink card down here to kind of make a three point jig to set in your paper so it hits the same spot every single time. Because you do one color at a time typically, one color, let it dry, and then come realign the paper and do the second color on top of that after it's dried. This is a one color print, so it does the same way as far as screen printing it, but centering it is a little bit more important on two color prints. So we're gonna do this in red ink. Good way to use these cleanup cards is to cut them in half, they go a lot longer and they dip in these small containers a little bit easier. And we're going to put a little bit of ink on the bottom, enough to coat the screen. Now, the DIY poster kits include bigger screens that have higher mesh. The higher mesh have smaller holes. It's a 230 mesh, meaning 200, 30 threads per square inch. Those smaller holes retain the ink up in the mesh, retaining fine detail and allowing less ink to be printed through. We don't need as much ink on paper as we do on t-shirts. So that's why it has a little bit higher mesh. First of all, we're gonna flood our screen up. So we're gonna keep that screen nice and flooded, the same way we did with poster or with t-shirt printing. We're gonna flood it up all the way to the top there. And then we're gonna start on top, we're gonna push back on this. So we're starting on top and then we're pushing back. and typically one pass will do it, but we're gonna do another pass just to make sure. Now if you notice that screen cleared, it's not sticking to the paper, that's what off contact is important for. It's not sticking to the paper, it's cleared all the way up, it's bouncing back up. So now we're gonna lift it up, and we have a beautifully printed DIY poster, right there, rock and roll. So now we can do another poster, this goes pretty quick and easy. As we go to production printing, it's very important to keep a good amount of ink in the screen. You want to make sure that ink, there's enough ink in that screen so that screen's able to flood all the way from top to bottom. So we're going to start on top. This image is a little bit big for this screen. It would definitely work a little easier if we had a little bit bigger screen or a little bit smaller image. Then we flood up after we're done. We place our squeegee in the bottom. There's a second poster board. Do one more. Poster printing is pretty fun and it can go very, very fast. Now for this final print, because this is our last one, we're going to leave the screen with the ink all the way at the bottom of the screen mesh. So that we can clean it out easily. Now we're gonna see what this print looks like on a shirt too. To load a shirt on the plat is a little bit different. You want to make sure to open that shirt all the way up. Most shirts have center lines on them, so you get them all the way open like so, and then you can kind of see that center line on the platen. So you put that center line to the center line of the platen, that's why it's important to have everything nice and center, and then you put it all the way on the platen like so, all the way like that. And then you lift the shirt up so it's not stuck to the sticky platen and pull it off. So once again, we're putting it all the way on like that, and then we're lifting it up and pulling it back, allowing it to rest down nice and smooth. We typically want our print to start about three fingers down. So right here, if I take a look at this, I'm a little bit low. So I need to lift up again and move it to the top. So once I have my placement, I wanna take a sharpier marker and mark that on the platen. So I put a little mark right there. So when I come to do my next shirt, I know exactly where it's gonna be going. So now I flatten it down, then I flood up, and we're gonna print back. And we're gonna do that again, because this is a little bit higher mesh. If we had the 160, 156 mesh, we probably only need to do that once, but because this is 230, you want a good amount of pressure. You wanna make sure that ink is clearing. If you don't feel confident that you have enough pressure, you can lift up, but it's better to do it in the down position. So flood up, you don't want to put a lot of pressure in the flood position, and then print back, all the way back. Now once again, this is our last print, so we're done printing. We're gonna leave that ink on the bottom of the screen. And there's our print, looking great. So 
there's our DIY print on the shirt. Now we'll take that and we'll use a heat gun, flash dryer, or an iron to cure that. As we wrap up this DIY screen printing tutorial, we want to encourage you to continue on with the process. There's a lot of variables in screen printing, especially DIY screen printing, where you don't have all the optimal tools and tricks. But what you can do is you can never give up. And if you never give up, you're going to have success. Now, if you need help, you can contact us. We have support desk and libraries. So if you go to our website and click the support desk, you can find all of our tutorials and articles, over a thousand articles, over a thousand videos that help you screen print. You can also chat with us online, send us an email, or call us toll free. So here are a couple of tips and tricks specifically to DIY screen printing. First is your film positive. It's got to be dark and your screen has to be coated in a light safe environment with a very thin stencil. If your film's not very dark, investing in a better printer that makes a darker film will make your life way better. The screen is so important in screen printing. If you have a bad screen, you're going to make a bad shirt. But as you'll find out, if you have a good screen, even by putting it on the hinge on the tabletop, you're going to make a good shirt. So making that screen is super important. Another thing to keep in mind when you're printing posters and with thicker ink like white ink is off contact. You want about an even eighth inch between your screen mesh and your substrate. If you find that your screen mesh is sticking to your substrate or ink isn't releasing, raise up the off contact, add an off contact tab, and your whole world will change. Your print will look a little bit better. And finally, curing. You gotta make sure that your ink's cured, especially on t-shirts. So investing in curing sources is a good investment. Okay, so you've mastered that simple one, two color stuff in DIY screen printing, and it's time to take it to the next level. Well, here are a few ways you can do that. One is you can come to a Ryanet Screen Print Experience class. We have classes all throughout the country that help you learn to advance your screen printing skills. Another is you can add more colors to your game. We have a full line of colors, water-based inks from Green Galaxy, including our awesome Comet White, Neptune Blue, and a ton others. Next, you can add screen printing presses and really up your game as far as the ability to print more consistently and more colors. So if you're starting out with hinges, you can add a one color press, or if you're starting out with a one color press, you can add a four color press. And we even had six color presses and Riley Hopkins presses that are bigger than that. And those are just a few ways you can up your DIY screen print game. Now remember, all the stuff that came in your kit, all the supplies you can reorder on our website. If you have any questions on what to get, just contact us. So from here, DIY screen printing is completely up to you. You can use it to create your brand, share your voice, or maybe even inspire a movement. Why don't you go out there, populate the world with a bunch of awesome shirts, and have fun doing it yourself as a DIY screen printer.